Dear President, shall we start? Yes, we can start, uh, Dr. Sugar. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the veterinarian in different regions in the world. Thank you very much for joining uh, third international webinar series organized by Sri Lanka Veterinary Association. Uh, this is our seventh webinar in the third international webinar series. Today our topic is ensuring the well-being of kilonians, effective turtle and tortoise management, and key health consideration. Our resource person is Dr. Shashi Kalagamage, lecturer, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine and Animal Science, University of Peradenia. Our moderator is Dr. Dino Shadi Silva, well reputed with wildlife veterinarian in Sri Lanka. So thank you very much for joining today. And without get, getting much time, I would like to invite our president, Dr. Dilan Sathar Singh, uh, to welcome you all. Dear president. Thank, uh, thank you, Dr. Sugar. Uh, greeting from Sri Lanka. On behalf of uh, Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, I warmly welcome all the veterinarians who joined today to the webinar on ensuring the well-being of Chelonians, effective turtle and tortoise management and key health consideration. And today our resource person is Dr. Shashikala Gamage. And I must thank Dr. Shashikala Gamage on accepting our invitation and willingness to share her experience. She was uh, working more than five years in the Department of Wildlife Conservation and recently joined to the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine and Animal Science, University of Eradenia. And uh, also, I must thank Dr. Uh, Dinusha Dil Silva, who's a veterinary surgeon in the Department of Wildlife Conservation, for accepting the uh, uh, accepting the moderator portion of today's webinar. Uh, thank you very much to both of you, Dr. Shashika and Dr. Dinusha. Over to you, Dr. Dinusha. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dilan. Uh, I think you all can hear me. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to everyone around the world. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today's expert speaker, Dr. Sashikala Gamage. Uh, she was one of my colleagues uh, till very recent, and let me introduce her. Uh, Dr. Sashikala graduated uh, from University of Peradinia in 2016 uh, from Faculty of uh, Veterinary Medicine and Animal Sciences. After that, she uh, worked in Department of Veterinary Clinical Sciences for a year. Uh, then uh, in 2018, she joined the Department of Wildlife Conservation uh, because of her passion of wild animals. When she worked for the Department of Wildlife Conservation, uh, she spent most of her time at uh, Udavalava Elephant Transit Home. Uh, in 2021, uh, she uh, complete, uh, completed her Master's, master's of Philosophy, uh, studying immunological aspects of power virus. Very recently, she rejoined the Department of Veterinary Clinical Sciences, and currently she works as a lecturer there. Her special interest is wildlife medicine and wildlife surgery. Dr. Sashikala has already published some important research works and also has gained some international training on wild animal health management. Today, she is going to talk about a subject that has been gained uh, less attention in Sri Lanka, uh, that is well-being of turtles and tortoises. Before she starts her talk, uh, I would like to remind you, after her talk, uh, we will have an Q&A session. So you can either ask questions directly or you can type your questions in chat box. Uh, then I will ask questions on behalf. So without any further delay, I kindly invite Dr. Sashikala Gamage to start her talk. Thank you, Dr. Dinusha, for your uh, uh, brief introduction. And uh, uh, Dr. Dilan, 
Satara Singha and uh, uh, other doctors who uh, arranged this uh, webinar uh, for introduce for uh, asking me to conduct the, uh, conduct this web, uh, lecture. Um, shall I share my presentation with you? Yes, Dr. Shashika, yes, you can share. Uh, can you all see my presentation? Yeah, we can see the presentation, Dr. Sashikala. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I'll start. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Sashikala uh, Gamage, uh, working for the Department of Vet uh, Veterinary Clinical Sciences, University of Peradeniya. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to ensure the well-being of uh, colonials by effective turtle and tortoise management, uh, health management considerations. Um, even though I'm uh, today I'm working uh, as a lecturer at the Department of Veterinary Clinical Sciences, uh, last five years I worked for the uh, Department of uh, Wildlife Conservation. Uh, so the most of the things today I'm going to speak about is uh, mainly based on the knowledge and experience gathered during those time period. Therefore, I thought of uh, adding uh, the logo of the Department of Wildlife Conservation here. Okay, first of all, uh, I'll give a brief, a brief introduction about the classification. Even though we called uh, this order Kilonian previously, now this order is known as Testudines. Uh, order Testudines uh, belongs to the Kingdom Animalia and Phylum Chordata and Class Reptilia. Uh, the Order Testudines have uh, three suborders. Most of the extinct species are uh, belong to the Order Paracrydoidira, and the suborder Pleurodira uh, are known as the side neck turtles. As, the, as you can see here uh, in this picture, they uh, withdraw their head by bending in horizontal plane and place the head in front of one of uh, the four limbs. And uh, all the species present in Sri Lanka uh, belongs to the suborder uh, Cryptodiron. Um, and uh, they are uh, also known as uh, heat neck tight turtles because the neck is not exposed after retraction. And uh, in Sri Lanka, there are five sea turtle species, and out of uh, them, uh, four species, uh, four turtle species, uh, belongs to uh, one uh, family. And the other uh, turtle species is leatherback sea turtle. And uh, there are uh, three, uh, uh, three, uh, three uh, freshwater turtle species and one uh, terrestrial tortoise present in Sri Lanka. Uh, out of them, uh, the Sri Lankan flap shell turtle is an endemic species to Sri Lanka. You can see the sea turtle species present in Sri Lanka. The center one is, uh, is the olive ridley sea turtle, and this is the leatherback sea turtle. And here you can see the green sea turtle, and this is hawk-billed sea turtle. And this is the uh, logger back, logger head sea turtle. And this is, a, uh, this is, as you can see, there are prominent spikes on the carapace. Possible, this, this image was taken from internet. And this is a, 
mostly this can be a juvenile one. These are the uh, terrestrial and uh, freshwater species present in Sri Lanka. This is a uh, star tortoise. And uh, I, uh, this is the, uh, these two are freshwater species. This is black, sea, black turtle, Indian black turtle. And this is the Sri Lankan uh, flap shaped turtle, which I told previously as endemic. Uh, in Sri Lanka, the above mentioned turtles and tortoises are not kept in captivity because they are considered as wild animals. However, uh, we may come across of, uh, these animals, these terrestrial species frequently in uh, our home gardens and sometimes on roadsides. Due to their slow moving behavior, they often face injuries such as road traffic accidents and animal attacks. The freshwater turtles are commonly found in uh, found uh, by fishermen uh, because they are entangled in uh, fishing nets frequently. Uh, in these situations, uh, these animals may require long-term treatments. Uh, in such cases, the best course of action is to transfer these animals to wildlife health management centers. Belongs to the Department of Wildlife Conservation or uh, to the wildlife unit at Veterinary Teaching Hospital, University of Peradeniya. As they are not allowed to be kept in captivity, general management and rehabilitation techniques will not discuss here. Uh, then I'll directly move on to the health considerations. Uh, uh, most common traumatic injuries include shell, limb, and head injuries. Other than that, uh, ingestion of foreign bodies and water pol pollution uh, also affect greatly for the health of turtles. Now I'm going to talk about the traumatic uh, shell injuries. Uh, traumatic shell injuries are the most common health consideration of turtles. Mm, uh, animal attack and road traffic accidents are the main reason for sh uh, shell fractures uh, in um, terrestrial species and freshwater uh, and sea turtles. Turtles can get injured by uh, watercrafts or propellers. Severity can be vary as you can see in these uh, pictures. If the visceral organs are affected, prognosis is guarded. The only treatment is fracture repair. There are several approaches. Um, we can cause use uh, orthopedic wires. Uh, uh, sometimes we use super glue so cloth and goes. Uh, and the most effective one is uh, the epoxy potty for the fracture stabilization. Um, you can use one or two of above mentioned approaches for one or the same turtle. Antibiotics and analgesics are essential for the uh, cell injuries. Uh, now I'm go going to talk about the traumatic limb injuries. Traumatic limb injuries are common among uh, um, fresh and seawater turtles because uh, they entangled in the fishing nets and uh, while uh, removing them, one or two legs can get injured. Uh, terrestrial species can get uh, limb injury mostly by animal attack. Um, uh, prognosis uh, is uh, usually uh, good 
but if the wounds are infected, uh, prognosis can be poor. Um, fractures can repair by using uh, by intramedullary pinning or external fixations. Uh, as you can see here in this picture, if the damage is more severe, uh, surgical amputation can perform. In this case, the analgesics and antibiotics are also uh, important. Traumatic head injuries, uh, these are less common, uh, but uh, can, uh, can occur because of these uh, reasons, as previously said. Uh, severity uh, can severe most of the time the severe uh, prognosis is poor in this case because uh, the severity is high when the head is injured. Um, antibiotics and analgesics and can be given for these patients. And sometimes we can use steroids to uh, reduce, uh, for the, in, uh, for reduce the inflammation uh, of the brain and the other tissues. Uh, if it's not uh, lifting the head uh, for feeding, uh, we can, um, introduce feeding to tube via esophagostomy uh, surgery. This is uh, in here, you can see uh, Olive Ridley sea turtle with head and neck injury. Uh, at the time of presentation, this turtle was unable to move its, its forelimbs and uh, were, uh, cannot tilt, cannot uh, raise its head for feeding. So uh, we uh, uh, we give uh, anti we gave antibiotics and analgesics and steroids for a long period, and after around and we inserted a feeding tube, and you can see how it was fed during the hospitalization, and uh, uh, it was released after two months of time, uh, released back. To, to the place where it was found. Mm -hmm. Ingestion of foreign bodies is mostly common among uh, freshwater, uh, freshwater and seawater species. And um, these are the common foreign bodies like fishing hooks, uh, plastic bags, rigiform particles, and sands or stones, and sometimes bones. So severity uh, can be mild to moderate. The prognosis is good if we identify the condition, if we, if we diagnose the condition earlier and attended without delay. Um, if the uh, Ingestion uh, for ingested foreign body is uh, is not a sharp object. We can use oral lubricants or laxatives, and we can observe animal for few days. In the in this picture, you can see the see a uh, it's a radiograph image of an turtle uh, ingested with a uh, a radio loosened sub uh, loosened object, and you can see the gas filled intestines here. Uh, if the ingested foreign body is a sharp one, as you can see in these pictures, uh, these are fishing hooks. Uh, in these uh, In these three uh, images, uh, the fishing hook uh, is mainly located in neck. 
um, since you this since the neck is not extended fully, uh, we can see it's as it is in the inside the shell, but it's inside usually it's inside the neck. So in these cases, we can do uh, esophagostomy surgery and easily remove the hook hook from the side. And uh, in this image, you can see it's pour towards the, uh, as you can see uh, the hook is located more towards the stomach. Uh, in this case, we cannot approach through the uh, esophagus. Uh, the uh, inguinal soft tissue approach is the most commonly uh, common procedure to follow here. Um, but uh, in this animal, this is a case presented to elephant transit tomb, the uh, teaching of the wildlife hospital. Um, it was uh, in this animal, this animal is a small one. So we have to do a uh, transplastrin surgery for this one. Um, okay, uh, injured or uh, surgically interweight animal may uh, refuse feeding for long time until they, because of the, because they are not uh, comfortable with the environment and as well as the stress caused by the injury and the surgical inter intervention. Uh, therefore, uh, it's, uh, therefore uh, it is suggested to, for, it, it's good to perform esophagostomy uh, tube for these animals uh, because we can ensure that they receive adequate nutrition uh, for their maintenance as well as for the repair and recovery. I'll show a small video to you uh, how to perform the esophagostomy surgery. Can you see this? Can you see this video? Uh, still, we can't see the video, Dr. Sashikala. Dr. Sashikala, I think you have to share the uh, video selected. Otherwise, only your presentation is shared. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Yes, we can see uh, it now. 
Yeah, yes, my wife wants it. Okay, it, it's a simple procedure. Can you hear me now? Dr. Sashikila, go ahead, we can hear. Okay, um, it's a simple procedure to follow, but uh, you have to make sure that you have anest anesthetized the um, tertiary well and uh, the other requirements, if you, uh, it's good if you can place uh, the IP uh, line and uh, secure the uh, secure the with that uh, with endotracheal tubing uh, because if in in sedation these animals tend to have uh, 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 the respiratory uh, sudden respiratory. Uh, uh, respiration uh, will stop easily. Uh, now I'm going to uh, uh, list some uh, common uh, infections of the turtles. Uh, most commonly we can see some parasitic infections, um, that both nematodes, flukes, and tapeworms, and some viral infections can also occur in Kiloniums, and these are the uh, bacterial infections that commonly occur in kiloniums and ticks. You can see ticks commonly in among them, uh, and uh, mycotic agents that can cause uh, infect kiloniums uh, are Aspergillus uh, candida species and sometimes we may, may able to see in Tamiba and coccidial infections in uh, uh, colonials. These are the possible zoonotic diseases, uh, certain diseases that commonly uh, that can, uh, you have to be careful when you are handling uh, the turtles. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to uh, move to the red deer slider. Uh, this is the uh, uh, this is this uh, species is belongs to the family Emidite, and 
this is the most popular pet turtle in the world and the world most invasive turtle as well. Mm. This, uh, the red deer sliders can adapt well in different environmental conditions. Uh, they mature early and uh, they have high fecundity rate. So, uh, therefore, they have a high chance of establishing in certain environments. And with their large body size, they can easily compete uh, with uh, other. Uh, uh, native species for food and uh, food basking and for nesting sites. Because of being uh, invasive species, this, this uh, species can cause a, a negative impact to the ecosystem. They can transmit diseases and they uh, fight with the for space and uh, food with the other native species. And uh, the, even other than that, they can uh, be, uh, they can destroy the eggs and larvae of the most of the other uh, native aquatic species as well. Therefore, please do not introduce this pet turtle into the natural environment. Uh, I'll give a brief, uh, brief, uh, in brief uh, description about the housing. Uh, we need to provide clean water for red deer sliders and heated basking area with a sloping ramp. Uh, and uh, the providing a uh, nesting area for females will encourage uh, oviposition. And uh, for adult animals, uh, it's good to provide outdoor environment also. The water depth should be at least 1.5 times the length of the turtle's shell. And uh, we need to overcrowd, uh, uh, overcrowd these we need to avoid overcrowding of this species because uh, sometimes they show aggressive behavior towards others. And in such cases, you need to keep these animals individually. Males uh, move around, uh, in natural, males move around seeking females for mating. Uh, therefore, females and females are mostly ter territorial. The uh, optimum temperature, water temperature is 20 to 29 degrees. Uh, it's good if you can provide uh, 20 to 24 degrees of, uh, uh, of, uh, for adults and 20 to 26 for juveniles. Uh, and they prefer humid, proper humid environment and providing full spectrum light is best to perform. Nutrition, they considered as omnivores, uh, but, uh, but uh, mostly the juveniles are carnivores. With the age, they are uh, used, uh, used for plant foods and uh, when they become adults, most of the adults are herbivores. Um, you can uh, feed uh, the, they prefer feeding insects and earthworms, worms, uh, slugs, snails, um, uh, certain worms and worms, and uh, uh, sometimes we can provide fish and certain um, pellet feed for uh, juveniles. Uh, adults mostly prefer uh, greens and fruits. Uh, uh, and aquatic plants. Uh, now I'm going to uh, talk about some health conditions of red deer turtles. Uh, uh, anorexia is the most uh, common thing we can encounter. Um, 
Uh, if we can rule out all the other infectious diseases, most probably uh, this can be due to uh, the environmental changes because they are very sensitive for the temperature and other stresses, other environmental stresses. In if uh, if uh, this is because of the environmental changes, uh, the optimizing husbandry and nutrition will help to recover these uh, anorexic uh, turtles. Beak deformities can be seen in due to most of, most of the time due to the nutritional deficiencies. Sometimes we can see cloacal organ prolapses. Uh, that is main, main, in these cases, need surgical approach. Conti uh, cutaneous and subcutaneous lesions also common. Um, uh, these uh, lesions can be infected by uh, bacteria or uh, sometimes fungus and sometimes the cloacal mites also, in, uh, also get involved in these lesions. So uh, these lesions uh, have to be treated with antibiotics and or other antifungal uh, preparations. Um, and the cystic calculi is also common among turtles. Uh, in this case, also a surgical approach is essential. And you can diagnose uh, cystic calculi easily through uh, radiographic images. Mm, and diarrhea is the other common health uh, condition of turtles. The diarrhea can be due to parasitic bacterial or uh, sometimes uh, fungal infections. Um, and a high fiber diet, providing high fiber diet and fluid and electrolyte as required. And we can provide uh, uh, probiotics by feeding them with the uh, feces of uh, healthy animals. And uh, the, the medicines can be used based on the diagnosis. Dystochia is also common among uh, these animals. The uh, providing on a disturbed nesting area will uh, help to prevent occurring dystochia. Oxytocin uh, can be given and fluid therapy uh, to improve hydration and calcium uh, supplementation will also be effective uh, if if those were not uh, if it was not uh, respond to those uh, we have to perform a surgery to this and ear infections are common among them because of because uh, they are very sensitive to to the water quality in uh, uh, when the water water pollution is there, the commonly uh, we can see the ear infections. Uh, ectoparasitism, the if they have uh, wounds on uh, their body, uh, the maggots can be infected. Can infect ma uh, maggots can be seen. Uh, ticks infection infestation is also a common finding. Uh, endoparasitism, as we said uh, previously, we can see certain nematodes uh, and uh, flukes and also uh, some tapeworms. Gout is also a common finding of them, um, and heat damages heat damages uh, to the uh, uh, carapace or plastron uh, as well as to the uh, skin of the limbs and head can be seen. And hypervitaminosis A uh, is um, due to excess vitamin A. This causes a degenerative changes in epithelia, as you can see here in this picture. Um, uh, in this case, most of this uh, condition most of the time occurs in the uh, turtles provided with vitamin A, uh, excess vitamin A. So we have to discontinue the um, 
uh, vitamin A supplements given in this in these uh, turtles. Uh, hypovitaminosis A is also a uh, cause of uh, squamous metaplasia and degenerative changes in epithelial surfaces like conjunctiva, uh, conjunctiva, swollen eyes, uh, sometimes uh, rhinitis, conjunctiva is as you can see in these pictures. Uh, epithelial degeneration of gingiva and pancreatic duct drainage skin and lung alveoli. Uh, oral or injectable vitamin A uh, supplementation can, uh, can uh, be performed and dietary management uh, including uh, vitamin A containing uh, substances and if the ocular tissue is affected, we can give uh, ocular antibiotic uh, ointments. Intestinal impaction or obstruction, as we discussed previ previously, uh, this is also common uh, among them. Uh, and septicemia can occur in the, these uh, turtles when they uh, when they frequently over uh, frequently exposed to uh, stress or uh, sometimes uh, exposing stress for a long period can uh, the the um, the bacteria are commonly present in oral cavity and GI tract and also in cloaca can get upper hand and cause septicemia. In this case, we need to give a uh, uh, series of uh, antibiotic uh, treatment, uh, parenteral antibiotic treatments also. Respiratory tract in diseases, the upper respiratory tract diseases uh, can be easily identified, but uh, when the lungs are involved, uh, most of these animals will not show uh, signs of a uh, respiratory tract. Uh, until uh, the 90, 80 to 90% of the lung tissue is affected. But uh, the lung, uh, this can be easily diagnosed by lateral radiograph. Uh, you can see the changes in lung tissue in radiographs. Um, these are the medicines that we can use for uh, turtles. Uh, um, antibiotics. Are amphicillin, cefuroxine, cephalexine, doxycycline, enfloxine, and metronidazole. And sometimes we can use sulfur trimethoprim as well. I only included the commonly uh, find, commonly, uh, find uh, antibiotics here and antibiotics and other medicines here. Uh, fluconazole, itraconazole, and ketoconazole, nistatine. Uh, can be uh, used as an antifungal agents. Uh, antiparasitics, uh, albendazole, fembendazole, and mebendazole, piperazine, trasequental, and pyrantal can be used. Flunexine and ketoprofen, meloxicam, and tramadol are the analgesics that can be used for turgis. Uh, these are a few publications of the turtles, and uh, thank you. Uh, I'm not an expert on this field, but uh, I, uh, you can ask questions. I may be able to answer your questions. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sashikala, for your wonderful talk. Uh, I'm sure the experience you shared will be very useful for us uh, as exotic animal practitioners. So now it's time for uh, the questions. And now I am opening the floor for you all. Uh, so in the chat box, uh, there's a question from Dr. Viknath. Uh, what antibiotics and analgesics and antifungals we can use in them? I think, uh, uh, Dr. Sashikala, can you please go back to the slide titling 
medicines used for tetris dr sashikala okay yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, can you share? Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Viknath, you can find uh, your answer from these slides. So I think uh, uh, Dr. Sashikra, you don't, uh, do you have any further uh, comments uh, on his questions that he's asking? What antibiotics, analgesics and antifungus we can use in them? Uh, if these are the common, uh things that we can easily found uh, in the uh, found and uh, yeah this can be used uh, safely for these animals okay and uh, we have another question from dr logis uh, he's asking uh, uh, whether you have seen any hibernation related anorexia in Places like Norelia and Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, I haven't encountered uh, in um, the turtles in Norelia, but I have seen uh, sometimes the drastic uh, environmental changes like sudden uh, raining and sudden temperature drops can, uh, can cause them to become anorexic. Yeah, that's true. I have seen them uh, when the environment, then when we provided adequate uh, um, temperature, then they eventually uh, start feeding. Okay. okay. Did I answer the question? Yeah, I think uh, so. And there's another question. Uh, and what is the way to give oral and uh, IMN subcut medication to turtles? Uh, okay. I, he's asking the types. Yeah. Yes. Uh, usually, the because of the considering their circulation pattern, uh, it's uh, good to uh, give uh, the antibiotics to uh, intramedullary, uh, uh, I um, intramuscularly uh, to the hind limbs. Uh, because uh, if uh, because of the its circulation, uh, the renal perfusion, uh, considering those things, um, the antibiotics given to the hind limb uh, muscul muscular tissue will uh, reach the systemic circulation. Uh, okay, Dr. Sashikri. No, no, polyp, polyp, right. Polyp uh -huh. reach the uh, systemic circulation. Okay, uh, so we have another question from Dr. Achira. Uh, he's asking, can we use isoprene for the anesthesia in Chironians uh, other than using diazepam and ketamine? Um, we can use. We can use. Okay. Uh, so there's another uh, question from Dr. Hasinta. Uh, she is mentioning uh, about a case she is uh, having in her clinic, I think. Uh, I have a patient with respiratory infection. I started dexamethasone and endro and started doxycycline. Do you have any suggestions for the treatment? What's your suggestion, Dr. Sashikala? Oh, uh, the, you have to do the, the, the dosing is also important. And uh, certain drugs that I am, the drugs that we use intramuscularly, uh, we have to uh, uh, give the frequently uh, if we, uh, until the respiratory infection is recovered. So it's good that you follow the uh, doxycycline and giving. Um, um, is it recovered? Uh, <laughs> Is it a chat box yes. question? It, it, it's in chat box. 
yeah okay <laughs> so uh, there are so many questions about slavery yeah. distress uh, so uh, two of our participants are asking uh, whether we can use nebulization for turtles oh i actually don't know about that um, i haven't used actually <laughs> Okay, uh, Dr. Achira uh, has replied uh, about that in rand cycling treatment. Uh, in last few weeks, I have, yeah, uh, the same thing I think he's asking again. He's also asking about the okay. nebulization. Uh, and he actually, he has done nebulization and he's telling that uh, turtle is getting improved. So, uh, Sashikal, I think nebulization oh, okay. yeah, to detect, good. yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, any any further questions? Uh, I think uh, now it's time to conclude the session. Uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Sashikala, for your wonderful talk. Uh, and thank you all, uh, fellow veterinarians. Uh, so, now I'm handing over the session to Dr. Disnaka. Uh, the Vice President of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association for a word of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Dinusha. Uh, first of all, uh, I must thank uh, Dr. Sashikala Gamage uh, for your presentation. It was a, a very interesting one and uh, it was a new area we discussed today. The topic uh, which was uh, ensuring the well-being of Kelonians, effective turtle and tortoise management. Um, I think uh, during our this third webinar series, uh, this is the only one uh, we have done on this uh, area, covering this area. We have done about three webinar series uh, during last three years. And, uh, uh, and during the entire period, uh, I think we have done only uh, uh, a very little number of uh, uh, webinars on uh, this topic. So uh, once again, I must thank Dr. Dinosh uh, Sashikala Gamage. Uh, it was very interesting and uh, successful webinar today. I think uh, we had a good uh, crowd here and they also may have learned a lot from you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sashikala. And uh, next I must thank uh, Dr. Dinosha De Silva, the moderator today. Uh, you did a very good job today moderating this webinar and uh, I think you handled the webinar very uh, well and uh, entire webinar was very successful. So thank you Dr. Dinosha and then uh, to the all the participants today uh, we had a, a good crowd from uh, all over the country and uh, from uh, abroad as well and I think uh, they uh, learned uh, a good uh, area I mean uh, uh, new area from you uh, during this webinar. And uh, this webinar will be available uh, in our YouTube channel, uh, slba.org, the YouTube channel, all the participants. Uh, you can share this uh, link, uh, the YouTube link with your friends. And we have uploaded uh, all the webinars we have conducted during the last three years in uh, this uh, SLBA webin uh, YouTube channel. So anytime you can go through and uh, uh, if you miss something, you can uh, have a look. Uh, so then uh, at last, I must uh, thank Dr. Subhat, Dr. Subhat Premaratna, uh, Vice President of SLBA. Uh, he's the one organizing this uh, uh, international webinar series on behalf of SLBA. Uh, Dr. Subhat, uh, thank you very much for your wonderful effort. And uh, with that, uh, we wind up the uh, session today and we will be meeting again uh, at the next uh, international webinar. Uh, I think Dr. Sugat is here so he might uh, he might uh, give you a kind of uh, idea about what will be the next uh, webinar. Uh, Dr. Sugat? Yeah, thank you Dr. Dishnaga. <laughs> Our next webinar on uh, uh, not in next Sunday uh, because we have to postpone uh, the, our next webinar because uh, uh, unavailability of uh, resource person. So uh, we can have our webinar on <coughs> uh, next 
27th this month uh, we will announce it and we will share a zoom link and uh, flyers with uh, with the, with all the groups so i would like to invite all of you to join for that webinar also and subscribe to SLV youtube channel thank you thank you dr shashika thank you all thank you thank you dr dinsha